The defense of Kobani has become now a national and international cause that has to be taken up. And that defense of Kobani is truly epic, I think. For more than a month, the freedom fighters of the People Protection Unit, the YPG, and the Women's Protective Units, the YPJ, have fought off a much more heavily armed ISIS. The more heavily armed tanks in no small part to US supplied arms, to US supplied tanks and ammunitions that were abandoned by the retreating US installed uh, regime in Iraq. US and Turkish governments kept announcing over the last few weeks the imminent collapse, the imminent fall of Kobani to ISIS. But thankfully that did not happen. Despite the refusal by all the powers that could have helped, despite the refusal by the United States until just two days ago to airdrop emergency supplies, including food, water, arms and ammunition to the besieged city. Kobani has not only survived, but now has begun to turn back the ISIS attack. Despite the fact that on its fourth border, the Turkish army has lined up its tanks and soldiers to stop reinforcements and supplies from reaching the freedom fighters. Well, we want to unconditionally declare our support for the arming and supply of these brave Kurdish freedom fighters. They have proved to be the real resistance to ISIS, to ISIL, in both in Syria and in Iraq. And they have every right, I argue, every right to accept weapons and, and supplies from anyone who will give, them to, give it to them, even from imperialist states like the United States. Of course, we in the Socialist Alliance and, and any other uh, progressive person knows that the United States is no real friend of the Kurdish freedom fighters no feel real friend of anyone fighting for liberation. And they, in fact, they have been supporting and uh, um, they're, they're closely tied to the Turkish government, which is the model enemy of these liberation fighters. And the Turkish government is a neo-colonial client state of the United States and other Western imperialists, as it has been other dictatorships and regimes in the region. So why has the United States shifted its position in the last few days? Well, that can be a point of discussion, and I'm sure our guest speakers maybe will have their views and some information. But in my opinion, it is because the YPG and YPJ freedom fighters demonstrated that they are simply not going to give up. And the heroic resistance has also brought one broad support and admiration from all around the world. And this has placed considerable political pressure on the United States government and other Western governments. And we have to keep up this pressure. We have to demand more airdrops. 27 packages of food, water, light arms and bullets supplied by the government of the Kurdish Autonomous Region in Iraq isn't enough. There should be more. We also should fully support the Kurdish freedom fighters call for Turkey, for the Turkish government, to allow a corridor for Kurdish reinforcements and supplies to Kobani. Probably on the orders of Washington, Turkey has just announced that it will finally uh, do this. But the information from the freedom fighters is to say that while this has announcement has been made, nothing has been done in practice. We further call upon the Australian government to exert pressure on the Turkish government to cease its support for ISIS and to implement this promise to allow free passage for reinforcements. Australia should also, the Australian government should also remove the Kurdish Workers' Party PKK, which is allied to YPG, YPJ, uh, from its list of declared terrorist organizations. It is not a terrorist organization, it is a liberation movement, a movement of freedom fighters. And it should press the United States and other governments to do the same. The branches of the organization I'm from, Socialist Alliance, all around the country are now organizing forums and educationals and public meetings on the importance of this issue. Two publications that we're involved in, Green Left Weekly and Links, are trying to provide regular and prominent coverage of Rojava as a living revolution that we should all support. And we are seeking to work with the Kurdish community to build and support broad solidarity activities. And if you agree with this, you should consider joining us in this effort 
or at the very least stay in touch by getting a subscription to Green Left Weekly. The people united will never be defeated, goes that famous slogan of the Latin American Revolution. And it's true, but words are not enough. We need unity in action if we are to win. Well, I think I've said more than enough to introduce our two speakers now, and I'd like to pass the mic over to the first of our guest speakers, to Sibel Tess from the Australian Kurdish Association. <laughs> 